Good morning, good morning. How's everyone doing today? Welcome this morning to United Covenant. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining us today. If you are a regular here, you probably noticed that your bulletin looks a little bit different today. So as Lucas has talked about the last couple weeks, uh, we are in preparations to going to two worship services, so we wanted to adjust the worship order slightly to make it more consistent. So instead of the normal announcement time being after the first song, we're going to do just a couple things right off the bat. But the main thing is, right on your bulletin, on the front page of your bulletin, there's the three most important announcements. Alpha, alpha, alpha. That's what people keep telling us, right? Now, other than that, just as a reminder to put prayer requests in the back, in the box underneath the sound booth. You can also give offerings there or give online at our website. But as we get started this morning, uh, we can, throughout the service, sign our attendance pads, pass them to the middle. Uh, but let's start with a quick prayer before we start our worship today. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you send your spirit this morning, soften our hearts, turn them towards you, and let us focus on the hope that we have in you, the real confidence that nothing can shake, that you are for us and no one can be against us, that you came to earth to bring us into your arms. Lord, that Jesus is our Savior and it is our love. Lord, bless this worship. Amen. Now please stand, quickly say hi to the people around you, and then we'll worship together. Hello.
make a savior because you healed my heart you changed my name forever free i'm not the same i think of master i think of savior i thank god hell lost another one beyond that we thank God for who he made us and who he says we are is who we truly are who am I that the highest king would welcome me I was lost but he brought me and know oh, his love for me oh his love runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Through the sun
I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all God, you are so wonderful. There are no words that our language holds to describe you. So we just thank you for your beauty, for your grace, for your mercy. That on Calvary's cross, you bled and died for me. You bled and died for every person in this room so that we can stand before you and praise the beautiful 
gorgeous, glorious name of Jesus Christ. Amen, church. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. Our first reading today comes from Psalms chapter 131. Lord, my heart is not proud, my eyes are not haughty. I don't concern myself with matters too great or too awesome for me to grasp. Instead, I have calmed and quieted myself like a weaned child who no longer cries for its mother's milk. Yes, like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord now and always. Our second reading today comes from Acts chapter 4, verse 8 through 10. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. All right, thank you, Charlie. Okay, well, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer now. And um, just so thankful, so much to be thankful for. And um, so good to have uh, Mary Munson and the Munson family here. Thank God that... Uh, <clears throat> you know, the Lord is just so good. And I've just been... God's been in, impressing on me just how... Um, you know, the Lord goes before us. And it is amazing how, you know, the Lord thinks of things before we ever get there. You know, he's got it prepared for us. And, and <clears throat> Mary was talking about how this baby, there seems to be more fluid around the baby than normal, right, Mary? That, uh, that even in that accident, as they were tail-ended by someone that wasn't paying attention, um, you know, that... Uh, even that protected the little one. So we just say thank God for that, and we give God the glory for, for his faithfulness, his goodness. And um, yeah, so lots to praise God about. And um, anybody else have something that they want to, they just feel like, man, I want to say thank God. Or maybe you have a concern that you want to lift up. As you're thinking of that, um, just yesterday, you know, speaking of how God goes before us, um, coming back from visiting Leah's folks in International Falls, and the electrical warning light comes on with the little picture of the battery, so something was haywire, you know, but um, thank God we were able to get into a gas station in Moose Lake, and then John and Carter came and got us, and um, just thankful how the Lord goes before, and then Bill Elmer is going to come and get our car today. So we're just so thankful for, for Bill and just for God's provision in that because it's better to be there than between International Falls and nowhere, right? So <laughs> praise the Lord. Anyway, does anybody have something they just want to shout out there? Margaret? Amen. Well, yeah, so Matt and I went and saw Elaine Erickson this past week, and, you know, what a blessing she is. So, yeah, praise God for that. All right, yeah, yeah. I have two siblings that are going through a lot of just kind of challenges, and they both have been really blessed by the Lord. Um, one of them is having a recovery from Okay. So, so Emily has two siblings that have just gone through rehab through the Salvation Army. Okay, so one just went in. So praise God, they're getting some help. And we're just so thankful for that. So we will pray for her. Is it brothers? Two brothers. Okay. All right. <clears throat> yeah, Cindy. Amen. Okay. Thank 
Okay, so Cindy's grandson hit a deer, but thank God it, 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 he was protected. Okay, so Janet. Heather's doing very well. Okay, so that's a great answer to, to prayer, that Heather is doing so well. So we just thank God for that. Yeah, Matt. We got kids going back to school. Okay, that's the thing the kids don't want to hear about, but uh, sorry, guys. And teachers. <laughs> it's even harder on them, you know, maybe. Okay, so we're going to pray for everybody going back to school. Yeah. It's Mike and Lynn's pickers anniversary today. Really? Oh, my goodness. Mike and Lynn, how many? 51. Come on. <laughs> Lynn is a saint. Lynn is a saint. <laughs> Sorry, Mike, if you're watching. <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer then. So, Lord God, we just want to say thank you so much for your goodness to us. Lord, we worship you today. We give you the glory today, Father. Thank you for the way that you go before us, Father. And, and thank you again for helping the Munsons through that accident. And, and um, God, we just pray special continued protection on the little baby that's coming, but God, thank you, Jesus, that they're all here and with us safely today, and we praise you. Thank you, Jesus, for helping Cindy's uh, grandson that went uh, hit the deer, and he's doing well. Thank you, Jesus, for helping Heather Stream continue to bless her and heal her, and God, we thank you so much for, um, for Emily Becker's two brothers that are, one is just going into treatment, one coming out, and we pray continued healing and deliverance for them. Thank you for what you're doing in their lives. And God, we thank you for Elaine Erickson, and we just praise you for her and, and many others that are um, not able to be physically with us, but maybe they're watching online, and we just say thank you, Jesus. We pray for each one that's going back to school, all the teachers, all the students. God bless each one in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray for our world, for just renewal and revival for our government, for our, our nation. We need revival, God. Come, Holy Spirit, and may it begin even among us, Lord. And so we just give you all the glory, all the thanks today, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, you know, revival really is the only... Um, I believe that's the only hope that we have in Jesus, right? Amen. So, um, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 11, Solomon, who God gave um, wisdom unlike any other person, Solomon had wisdom. And this is one of his observations. He says, I have observed something else under the sun. The fastest runner doesn't always win the race. And the strongest warrior doesn't always win the battle. The wise sometimes go hungry, and the skillful are not, all, are not necessarily wealthy, and those who are educated don't always lead successful lives. It's all decided by chance, by being in the right place at the right time. So that's true. You know, not every... It's not always... Um, as, as he says here, the fastest runner doesn't always win the race, and, and so on and so forth. Sometimes the one that you expect that is going to win um, doesn't. And again, you know, I know we, we just got through the Olympics, but um, you know, I was thinking of, uh, there was a Norwegian runner, I can't remember, Jacobson or Jacob something, I can't remember, Anyway, he was supposed to win. He had the world record. Anybody see that one? And, and he was, um, you know, slated to win, but he, he didn't even get a medal. You know, he miscalculated, and he went out too fast, and then the other guys beat him. And I think the American got, the, yeah, American got the gold on that one, I think. Anyway, 
you know, things don't always happen. Like, I think it was really an upset, you know, really a shock. And, and, so some t and I think a lot of times in the Bible, we see that unexpected things happen. And, you know, so many examples. But you remember how God called um, the prophet Samuel to anoint one of Jesse's sons to be the next king of Israel. And you remember how he went to Jesse's house and he said, well, I want to see your sons. And all the, you know, from the oldest to the youngest, they lined up and, and Samuel went down the line and, you know, the Lord said, no, not him. No, not that guy, not him. And they finally got through all the sons and, and he said, is this it? And he says, well, I still have the youngest one. He's out in the field. You know, he didn't even bother calling him. But when he came in, the Lord said, and of course it was David, and the Lord said, that's the one. Anoint him to be the king, the next king of Israel. And so, you know, unexpected things from happen. God uses people in ways that no one would ever expect. And if we go over to Acts chapter 3, we read about how in the early church, um, the Holy Spirit was poured out, and Peter and John were on their way to the temple, and there was a lame man that had been born um, crippled. And he was begging, and Peter said to him, he says, I don't have any silver or gold to give you, but what I do have, you know, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And and the guy was instantly healed. And he was so overcome with joy that he's, you know, walking and leaping and praising God. And all these people came to see this amazing miracle. And, and Peter and John took that opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And so um, we read here in, in Acts 4, verse 1, it says, While Peter and John were speaking to the people... They were confronted by the priests and captain of the temple guard and some of the Sadducees. So these were the religious leaders that didn't like them preaching about Jesus, right? These leaders were very disturbed that Peter and John were teaching the people that through Jesus there is a resurrection of the dead. They arrested them and since it was already evening, put them in jail until morning. But many of the people who heard their message believed it, so the number of believers now totaled about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. Again, this was, this was something that was so unexpected because, you know, the, and I'm, I'm sure the religious leaders were thinking, man, we just killed Jesus a few weeks back, and now he's got more followers than ever. You know, he's, now it's up to over 5,000, and it just, they, they couldn't stop it. And so they're trying to put a lid on this movement. They arrest these disciples. Verse 5 says, The next day the council of all the rulers and elders and teachers of the religious law met in Jerusalem. Annas the high priest was there along with Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the other relatives of the high priest. They brought in the two disciples and demanded by what power or in whose name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we have done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene. The man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures where it says, The stone that you builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. So there's power in the name of Jesus. It, it, it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't seem to make sense how there can be such power in the name of Jesus. And just by show of hands, tell me, um, 
Maybe you can raise your hand if Jesus has ever healed you before. If you've been healed by Jesus, oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, like, it's amazing, right? There's power in the name of Jesus. That's why we've got to be careful with the name of Jesus, because it's dynamite, right? That's why we don't misuse the name of Jesus. We don't use God's name in vain, right? We have to be careful with his name. And when we pray in the powerful name of Jesus, unexpected things happen. Really crazy things can happen. And, and we just give God the glory. And there is salvation in no one else. Okay, then let's go to verse 13. The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. Okay, these guys hadn't been to the, you know, the synagogue um, university or whatever. They, they hadn't been trained. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. They were just ordinary men, but they had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing right there among them, there was nothing the council could say. So they ordered Peter and John out of the council chamber and conferred among themselves. <clears throat> Excuse me. What shall we do with these men? They asked each other. We can't deny that they have performed a miraculous sign and everybody in Jerusalem knows about it. But to keep them from spreading their propaganda any further, we must warn them to sp not to speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. So they called the apostles back in and commanded them never again to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. The council then threatened them further, but they finally let them go because they didn't know how to punish them without starting a riot. For everyone was praising God for this miraculous sign, the healing of a man who had been lame for more than 40 years. By the way, if anybody ever tells you to be quiet about speaking the name of Jesus, you know what you do? You speak it louder. <laughs> right? Amen. <laughs> speak his name. Never be ashamed of the name of Jesus. And if you get in trouble for that, it's all right. And now it's easy for me to say, right? Well, what if I lose my job? I think God's got something better for you to do, right? He's got, he's got a purpose in it. And we have to stand up and we have to speak the name of Jesus. When something's wrong, should we just sweep it under the carpet and say, oh, let somebody else talk, you know, say it's wrong? No. You know what? We are called to be salt and light. And so when something is wrong, we have to have the courage to be like Peter and John and to stand up and say, hey, that thing's wrong. Because the devil wants to shut people up, but we're not going to be shut up, right? We're going we're gonna to speak the truth in love. We're going to speak the truth in love, but we're still going to speak the truth. Amen? Yeah, praise God for that. So um, this past... But, but, you know, God is unexpected, and... and and he does things through people that you'd never expect. I was at a... Um, so last Sunday um, after church, Leah and I went to um, this thing called Rural Fest in Isle, Minnesota, which is kind of far away from here. It was further than I thought it was. I was like, oh, man, where's this place? You know, but, but it was uh, near Mil Milax Lake, is that right? Or... So anyway, it's kind of up there, but um, it was great. It was, a, it was a free will offering concert, Christian concert. So you could just go and, and give them whatever. Jim and Cindy were up there, and, and um, there was others as well. But 
Anyway, so um, we were watching this concert, and one of the, one of the um, acts that we saw, with this guy named Josh Wilson, um, who's really gifted. I think he's from Texas, I'm not sure, but anyway, Josh Wilson shared his story, and he had, he's been in the music industry for some time, and actually, we're going to do one of his songs for Christmas, I think, Right? Yeah, maybe. We're, we're, it's still, uh, but you know, even if we don't do it, it's still good. Right? But we're, <laughs> anyway, we'll find out. So, um, but Josh Wilson shared about how, as a Christian artist, and he travels around a lot, and, but he had a secret that he didn't want anybody to know. And that was that he had a bit of a drinking problem. And for years, you know, he, he hid that. And he's, he's a born-again Christian. He's sharing the gospel, but he had this drinking problem. And, I mean, what a... You know, he didn't want anybody to know, right? I mean, what a bad example and witness and all that stuff. But he tried to hide it, tried to de deny it, but it was still there. And for years, he went on that way. And finally, um, he said, i got to get some help. So he admitted that he had a problem. He confessed it, and he went and got some help. Praise God. And um, you know what? He's been sober now for seven years. And, and, and as he was sharing that, there was a woman. I was up there in the mosh pit or whatever they call it, you know, up and... There was this woman by me that I noticed, and she looked like she'd had maybe a rough life. And as he's sharing that, you could just see that she's just touched by that testimony. You know, because, um, hey, you know what? We can struggle as Christians, right? Are we perfect? No, we're not. But we have a perfect Lord, and he can bring us out. And, and praise God for that testimony of healing and restoration in the midst of, of that situation. So we just thank God that out of, you know, that was pretty unexpected. I did not expect that testimony from him. But that's what he shared, and we rejoiced with him when he said, I've been sober for seven years. There was another guy named Ryan Stevenson who is actually going to be up in, um, he's going to be in Cumberland pretty soon the 7th of September, so maybe there's still tickets, I don't know, but Ryan Stevenson, um, he had a crazy testimony. He was sharing that, that he grew up in a, um, his family was quite poor. They lived in rural part of Oregon, and Ryan went to this little church, and their youth group went back when Ryan was young. He was in eighth grade. They went to this concert, Christian concert, and there was a group playing there at the time called DC Talk. Anybody heard of DC Talk long ago? You know, so, so he's watching this concert, and he doesn't really even know who these guys are, but as he's watching it, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit came upon him, and he, he went into a vision. And he, I mean, this had never happened to him before. It never happened to me before. But he's just this eighth grade kid, and all of a sudden he has this vision. And in the vision, he sees Toby Mack, who's one of the band members, and he's visiting with Toby, and Toby handed him something. And then the vision was over. And like, okay, that was weird. You know, then he grew up and went on in his life. And he was, Ryan was always very musical. His mom really encouraged him in his music, but it never really, like he would, he would perform at lo local, you know, coffee houses or church or somewhere, but like he, he wasn't, you know, in that industry. He was an EMT. So for years he would help people. He was in the ambulance. And, and one day they got a call and there was a woman who was struck by lightning. And so the ambulance went and Ryan Stevenson is that how you do it? We learned about that a while back. But he brought her back to life, brought this lady back to life. And she was so, afterwards, she was so grateful, she said to him, what can I do for you? And he goes, well, ma'am, that's, that's my job. You know, it's okay. You, 
you're alive, that's my reward, you know. But she was so um, thankful that she, she found out that he likes music, he's into music. So she says, you know what, I'm going to pay for you to make a demo recording. Probably not called records anymore, but a demo, whatever, tape. And um, so he goes to this studio. Who owns the studio but Toby Mac? He didn't even know. He just shows up at the studio. He goes there, and he's got this song that he's working on. It's called uh, Speak Life. Speak Life, Speak Life. You know, and... Well, Toby Mac hears it, and, he, and it needs a little more work. Toby helps him co-write it. They produce it. Toby signs him to his record label, and he goes from being an EMT to into the music industry like that. And the vision came true, right? How crazy is that? But that's totally unexpected. I have one more. I just like to tell stories. That's <laughs> what the sermon is, I guess, just a bunch of stories. But anyway... Um, there's another guy named Ben Fuller, who was just a powerful. Ben Fuller was um, a drug addict and alcoholic for many years, but very gifted musically. And Ben Fuller went down to Nashville to try to get into the music industry. And when he was down there, he met some people from his home state that happened to be Christians. This is my understanding. I hope I'm getting the story right. Anyway, they invited him home for supper, and they just, they're Christians. They just loved him. And this guy was rough. But they loved him. They invited him to church. He got saved at church. And um, he's now been sober for five years and been a Christian for only five years. But God is using him powerfully to share the good news. He's traveling all over and how unexpected, you know, that the Lord would take someone who is so deep into the pit, but bring him out and use him for his glory. That's what God does. God can take any person, and, it, and it's, again, completely unexpected. And we, when we read about Peter and John, we know that, you know, they were not the folks that anyone expected could do anything. You know, but they were, um, it says they were, they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training. But you know what they did have? They had the Spirit of God. They had a relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And they were able to share the good news. And the good news is here in, in, um, Acts 4.12, it says, There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. And, you know, thank God for that, really. Because we don't have to... You know, God actually made it really simple. There's not a million ways to heaven. It's not through Mohammed. It's not through Buddha or Joseph Smith, or the Jehovah Witness religion, or New Age, or whatever, right? You know, there's only one way to heaven, and that's through who? Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He made it very simple. And that's a message that anyone even a child, you know, even a child can grasp it. And so as we come now to Holy Communion, this is the most wonderful thing that, that the Lord God has, has given us, this feast, this meal. And I'm going to ask, um, Matt Thayer is going to help me out today here. But God has given us this something that's very, very simple to help remember the gospel and to celebrate what God has done for us. So um, it's, it's something that is so basic, and yet, even though it's so basic, 
It's something that God powerfully speaks through. Not sure where we'll put that one there. Okay. So, friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Many will come from east and west, from north and south, and sit at table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust Him to share the feast which he has prepared. Come to this sacred table, not because you must, because you may. Come to testify, not that you are righteous, but that you sincerely love our Lord Jesus Christ and desire to be his true disciples. Come, not because you are strong, but because you are weak, not because you have any claim on the grace of God, but because in your frailty and sin you stand in constant need of his mercy and help. Come not to express an opinion, but to seek his presence and pray for his spirit. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, and I just ask that you stand as we read this uh, together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, suffered the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Yes. So hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ as they are delivered by the Apostle Paul, the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And, and, you know, before we go on any further, I just want to say that um, as we come to the Lord's table, you know, we, each one of us comes, we're, we're not perfect, right? The, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But we're justified, we're justified freely by his grace. And so we come to the Lord's table needing God's grace, celebrating His grace and what He did for us that, that we could access the grace of God. And so before we come to the Lord's table and take this meal together, um, let's just take a moment of silent prayer in preparation and just right where you're sitting, just pray And if you need to confess something to the Lord, ask him for forgiveness. Just take that moment right now and confess silently to the Lord. So, Heavenly Father, we, we lay these sins at the foot of the cross and we say thank you for your grace, thank you for your forgiveness, and we thank you for the wonderful promise that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 
the bread which we break, it is not a part, not a is participation not? in the body of Christ. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. And the cup which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood in the blood of Christ? Christ is in our midst, and praise God that He always will be. We thank God for that. So we're going to ask our servers to come on up. Thank you. And we'll have, um, as our servers come by... um, Take, uh, you can take one of the pieces of bread and just hang on to it, and then once everybody's been served, then we'll take it together.
<laughs> okay. Well, this cup is the new covenant in the blood of Christ. Let's drink it together. So, Lord God, again, we just praise you for your grace to us. We just celebrate that today. Thank you for washing away our sins, Lord, and for giving us that wonderful gift and promise of eternal life. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We may stand together.
So um, once again, there is prayer available up here for anybody that would like a prayer for anything. If you're here today and you have questions about um, inviting Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, if that's something that you haven't done or maybe you feel that you've been far away from him, you need to get back with him, we would love to talk with you. Or if you just have a prayer for any other thing, you're welcome to come and pray with the prayer team. And um, God bless you this week and tomorrow. Have a great day on Labor's, Labor Day. And uh, Matt is going to end us off with the benediction. All right. Now receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Um.